Um, yeah, I've been feeling energy from this area, so I researched a little bit, and um, there are some things that the heart does. It's heart rate variability. I've heard of that. I don't understand it all that much, but bipolar people have, um, I think it's a lot. So anyway, there's something in the heart, and also hormonal changes in the heart. And I didn't look at some other things, but, uh, you know, maybe there's something in the heart. Now, I'll tell you this, I don't, I don't think it's, well, it could be spiritual, yeah, because all these years I felt so guilty. Um, you know, I, I, my mom, she pushed my buttons and I responded. Uh, my brother pushed my buttons, CPA, and I responded. And I had so much anger. The Lord told me in 2015, I think it was, he said, your problem is anger. So I set about, you know, forgiving people. And the pastor told me at First Presbyterian Augusta uh, that my, my problem was basically anger and, um, and forgiveness, forgiveness for People had done me wrong after this had happened, you know, and a um, whole town, Augusta, Georgia. I could write a book on just stuff about that. But um, anyway, it was it was a few days after um, I gotten off the medicine and uh, Zyprexa, and I started taking one milligram of Risperdal. And I was praying. Um, I don't even remember what I was praying about. Uh, forgiveness, I think. I think that's what it was for all I'd done. And the Lord says, you're absolved. I know a lot of words, but I didn't know exactly what absolved means, so I looked it up on the Internet. And it means hell blameless. Hell with no responsibility. It went much deeper than, you know, what I knew of forgiveness. And I started crying. Uh, you know, it, God knows that's 50, 52 years since everything happened. And um, I felt dirty in ways that we all do. We, we, we do things. And, um, I, 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 you know, I... My thing was anger. I had lots of anger. And uh, it was like, wow. I, I don't know how to describe it. When I was 10 years old and got saved, I had a similar feeling. I can remember. I can see the church. I can see everything. I can see me walking down. And my brother Rick. Um, I think he just followed me. Uh, but... Um, that, that anger is gone. I've been having peace now since the Lord told me that. Started a little bit by little bit in late 15, a lot in 16, and, and here in, in Lancaster in 17, and even late 16. Just periods of just bliss. And I didn't know where it was coming from, but it got more and more and more. And now I have that. Um, you know, usually occurs in the evening after everything's, you know, the long days has gone. But, um, get, get absolved. Um, it's wonderful. Oh, it was another thing the Lord told me. He said, I'm a pastor to about 30 pastors in Pakistan, Kenya, and Uganda, a couple of in Nepal. Uh, online, you know, Skype and, and, and support and all that. And they helped me so much. I asked the Lord back in 2014, December, uh, I, I want to get back in ministry because I, I, I was 14 years at a church on television ministry. And then I worked in another church, but, you know, just, just like Meals on Wheels and stuff. And um, so this is a long story. I don't, I'm not going to tell you. But I met a pastor in um, Portland, Oregon, and 
he knew 2,000 pastors around the world. So I, I think my first friend was Ped, uh, Frederick uh, uh, Makano in Kenya. And then I started meeting pastors from Pakistan. And I never knew, you know, I, I never knew Muslim before, up close. And, um, but um, anyway, it just expanded and expanded. And I've got a ministry now. I need funding for it. I, I gave about $12,000 away in the last three years uh, to a lot of different ministries here in America. And, <coughs> um, you know, we farmed in two countries. And I think I looked at it, looked about 200,000 meals were, were given. And they sold some for, for cash to buy other things. But anyway, um, Get that, get absolved, get forgiven. It's an amazing release. And the uh, Lord will talk to you. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. It's as simple as that. If you open yourself up to God, he won't shut up. You know, you'll say, my schizophrenic, you know. <laughs> but it's not. It's a still voice. It's a quiet voice. Oh, it's powerful. Um, Satan is like paper. Uh, you know, he'll talk to you too. He'll, he'll want you to do wrong things and mislead you. But he, he's got a, no substance to that voice. And sometimes he sounds a little bit like God. You know, and God allows that. But we have to be discerning of spirits. And uh, it's tough when, when you're bipolar, schizophrenic, schizoaffective and all that. Because you're dealing with a lot more stuff. But uh, I, managed, I managed to do that, and I've never been in jail. I've, um, I've never committed a crime. And, and you know what? You can't blame mental illness on you doing right or wrong. You know, the devil made me do it, Flip Wilson. Well, we're all given um, the ability to discern right from wrong. Even if you're mentally ill, you know right from wrong. There may be some shades and little things, I, but we we do have that. God puts that in us when we're born. Otherwise, we would never find God, um, and the world would really be crazy. You know, it's crazy right now. The last few years, but. Um, be in the will of God. Ask him, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in anything you want to do. Um, I took an IQ test. I took, well, it was 157 in college in 1990 at Augusta, what is now Augusta University. And, um, you know, I was having problems, and so I, I decided to get tested. I, I was having spatial problems. My spatial problem reasoning is awesome now. 3D, I took a test at Dean Rose Center in New York. I like scored, I, I think I scored perfect on that. Yeah, I did. Um, and these were 3Ds and they were eight-sided, all kinds of stuff. i never done like that. They always trip me up. Anyway, um, um, Oh, uh, be in the will of God, and He'll talk to you. He'll guide you, and um, you know you don't you don't have to depend on yourself to make a lot of decisions and and, and uh, wise decisions. You know, read the book of Proverbs, get a commentary on Proverbs if you're not able to understand um, the Bible that well uh, in your beginnings, maybe. With the Bible, with Christ, but um, let let God guide you. Especially if you're mentally ill, you you gotta gotta let God into your life. Uh, he'll save you from so much heartache. Um, so, oh, the IQ test. <clears throat> I scored 157. That was 1990. And in New York, I, I had therapists, and we'd play games on you know, IQ test games. I've scored 128, 138, 138. 
Uh, but I was taking uh, aripiprazole, and uh, these drugs will knock you out, you down, because you, you don't see things. And, uh, so at Dean Rustin, I was scoring awesome. And I took one um, early, maybe late last year. I scored a 200. It was online, and it was one of those that, you know, I'll say credited. And um, I took another one on Facebook, you know. They said, if you can get all these correct, 15, you got an IQ 160 or greater. It was easy. And they were hard. I, you know, most people are not going to get them. Uh, yeah. uh, my cousin, she's a former CEO of a, a health company, and she was a nurse back when I was, you know, 20s, 30s, all that. Um, so he got 160, got 15 out of 15. So, um, you know, when I took that test, I said, wow, 200. And the Lord spoke to me, he said, your IQ in man's numbers is 250. I also took an EQ test. I was mad that day. And uh, at that moment, I made a 200 on the EQ test. I think probably I got them all right because I, a couple of them I was mad and, you know, they happened to be the right answer being mad. So um, then just a couple of days ago, he was telling me, um, he says, um, IQ doesn't mean a thing. It's useless. If you're in God, and if you know Jesus, and you know the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit guides you in everything. Um, you don't need you don't need an IQ because He told me everybody has a genius. Whether you're a painter that paints a wall, whatever whatever it is you find that's in your heart you want to do. God has given you a genius to develop. You know, it just it doesn't come free. I didn't get smart. I st and just health alone, I read about a half a million more pages in the last 30 years. And I, 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 I'd forgotten that I even started back as early as 1980, 81. And, um, but that wasn't serious. So, Everybody's got a genius. Nobody's better than anybody else. But you've got to find your genius. And if you don't find your genius, that's your problem because God's got it for you already. So, um, you know, if you don't have that 157 IQ or what, like, you know, um, even genius geniuses, they're not the same. You know, some people are great actors and they're genius at it. Some people are rocket scientists. And, Scientists of the universe like Einstein. Um, some people are fish geniuses. You know, they know the ocean. So, um, genius comes in different ways. And, uh, you know, according to God, everybody's got a genius. Um, and, you know, here's, here's another thing. In heaven, um, they're... It's not all equal in heaven. If you, if you think there's a disparity on earth, uh, there's no disparity in heaven. It's just that people that get there, if you haven't won many souls to Christ, uh, you don't have a reward that Peter and Paul and the disciples, uh, you know, they it's the biggest MLM you've ever seen in your life and, or will ever see. And uh, when we work for the kingdom, whether we give money, whether we do it representationally, uh, you're building your, even if you don't have money, if you make $5,000 a year, you can be earning riches in heaven. This is a short life. It's a vapor. The Bible tells us that. So, um, you know, all you got to do is breathe, and you can be a blessing to somebody. And... Um, you're earning your reward in heaven. So, um, money's not everything. Money isn't important. Um, Maurice Guzman, when I was at the University of Miami, 
he had written a book, Money Isn't Important. I read that book and it just blew me away. Um, he was a billionaire and he built our IMP designed perfect acoustic Guzman Hall on the University of Miami campus. Uh, I had the privilege of recording in that hall uh, a couple of times. So, um, you got a genius and you got to find it. And if you get in touch with God, he's going to show you. He's going to develop it. Everything needs to be developed. God just don't go zap, you know. You do start with, some people start with more than others, I guess. And, and when you die, some people got more than others in heaven. There's going to be poor people in heaven. The people saved on their last breath. Um, they're not going to have the same somebody that was saved say me, at 10 years old, although I grew as a Christian and you know, I did much more for the kingdom later on. And the Lord says more about money than salvation is that um, if he can trust you with a little, he can trust you with a lot. And what, what does he want to trust us with? To help the kingdom of God, to build a kingdom around the world. The United States is 90% of all missions in the world. And um, that's why Donald Trump was elected, because this country will not be destroyed uh, by evil leftists, progressives, communists, and all that. They can't do it. This is God's country. It was founded here. I can go into a story about Columbus. Uh, pretty profound about the ninth of Av. The Jews were kicked out of Spain on the ninth of Av, and on the tenth of Av, uh, Columbus sailed and discovered America, and it became the biggest place in the world for Jews outside of Israel, and safe, too. So, ninth of Av was very important. The first temple was destroyed, Solomon's temple, on the ninth of Av. The second temple was destroyed by the Romans on the ninth of all. And um, a lot of things have gone on on the ninth of all. This is Rabbi Jonathan Kahn teachings. And um, he, he's a Christian Jew. Matter of fact, he traces his blood back to Aaron, the brother of Moses. And um, so, I recommend you listen to him. I, he's my favorite. Um, you know, you gotta you gotta know Jew, you gotta know Hebrew, if you want to understand God. You gotta understand the feasts, the, all the feasts, um, because they all relate to the life of Jesus. Everything about the feasts are about Jesus. And well, anyway, that's something I just learned uh, last year. And um, so there's things, um, there's things that, um, uh, well, anyway, get right with God. He'll help you heal if you have a disease, whether it's in your mind or your body. And, um, He's the great physician. Depend on him. So, uh, talk to you later. Take care.